Okay, all today we're going to change our conversation a little bit. We're still going to talk about right triangles, but this time we're going to talk about how it relates to trigonometry. So there are three relationships that we need to know when talking about right triangles and trigonometry. We have this thing that's called the sine of an angle, S-I-N-E. And that's really just a relationship between the angle in the right triangle and two of the sides, specifically the length of the side opposite from that angle, and then the length of the hypotenuse. And I have a couple typos in there. I apologize for that. So uh, more simply put, sine, we, we abbreviate S-I-N. It looks like sin, but the appropriate way to say it is sine. And sine is a function, so we're going to be plugging in some angle measure. And we can simply write that as opposite over hypotenuse. So if I want to find the sine of B, I'm going to go look at angle B. The side that's opposite angle B is AC. And the hypotenuse of this triangle is BC. So my sine function for angle B is whatever the length of AC is divided by the length of BC. So if I then want to look at the sine of angle C, let me erase. The sine of angle C is the side opposite of it, which in this case is AB. The hypotenuse stays the same, so the sine relationship for angle C is the length of AB divided by the length of BC. Similar to that, we have the cosine. Cosine is a different pair of sides. This time we have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So if I look at angle B, the side adjacent to it is basically the side that is not opposite and is also not the hypotenuse. So the side adjacent to angle B is AB and my hypotenuse is still BC. So my cosine for angle B is the length of segment AB divided by the length of segment BC. Similarly, if I want to do the cosine of angle C, now my adjacent side is AC, my hypotenuse is still BC. The last relationship is a tangent, and that should be a uh, word that sounds familiar. Um, we talked about tangents to circles, and now we're talking about tangents and right triangles. This time we take the opposite side and the adjacent side and that fraction gives us the tangent of an angle. So if I look at angle B, my opposite side is AC, my adjacent side is AB. Tangent of angle C, my opposite side is now AB and my adjacent side is AC. So let's see what that looks like in an example. Um, a lot of times these things uh, become much easier when you look at an example. So I want to write my three trig ratios for angle X. So I'm talking about this angle, angle X. So I'm going to label the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse. So across from angle X is this side that's labeled 28. That's my opposite. The side, the longest side, the one across from the right angle is my hypotenuse. And that leaves this last side to be the adjacent side. So I want to write the sine ratio, the cosine ratio, the tangent ratio for angle X. So for sine, cosine, and tangent here, I put X in there. That's my angle that I'm talking about. I like to shorten up the fractions. It just makes it easier. And now we just have to plug the numbers in.
from our picture since we've labeled the opposite, we've labeled the adjacent, and we've labeled the hypotenuse. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, that's 28 over 35. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 21 over 35. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, 28 over 21. And whenever you have a fraction, you should always simplify it. So if we reduce all these fractions, we get that the sine of angle X is 4 fifths, the cosine of angle X is 3 fifths, and the tangent of angle X is 4 thirds. Now we're going to talk in the future that if we knew the measure of angle X, if we knew exactly how many degrees it was, we could plug that in here for, a, for X. And we can use the functions on the calculator, which we'll talk about in another lesson. And when we put sine of whatever that angle was in the calculator, it would give us four-fifths as an answer. I'm going to use the same triangle, but this time we're going to do uh, angle Z. So now uh, my hypotenuse stays the same. It's still the longest side. But now the side opposite of angle Z is this one that's 21. And I'll just come write op. So this one is my adjacent side. So I, as always, write by start by writing the formula for each of them. Um, a sort of like trick to remember these three is to use so. Ka, Toa. So said quickly, so Katoa. Um, just sort of a trick, I guess, to remember which sides go with which uh, function. Once I label these and I've gotten my formulas written down, I could just plug the numbers in. And then I'm going to simplify my fraction. So pause here. I want you to write the three trig ratios for angle A. So we're looking at this angle. So write the sine of A, cosine of A, and tangent of A. Remember, you can use so, ka, toa to help you. So I'm going to label my sides. The one opposite of angle A is this one that's 16. The hypotenuse is 34. And the adjacent side is 30. Then I'm going to write my three trig ratios, my three formulas. And now I can just use these labels to help me plug the numbers in the appropriate spots. And then when I simplify all of these, I have sine, cosine, and tangent for angle A. So I want you to find the sine, cosine, and tangent for angle C. I'll give you three answer spots, one for sine, one for cosine, and one for tangent. Make sure you submit your answers on the Google form, and we will discuss in class.